welcome back to the 5J5 studio. I'm Parametric Phil, and this... Oh, oh he came in too soon. It's too soon with the explosion, okay? This is episode... What, what episode is this? This is episode five of the Rhino Fundamentals. I'm sorry about the explosion thing. Okay, anyways. Okay, this is not going to be... Um, this episode is not going to be uh, very long because um, to cover the fundamentals of this, is, it's it's not that complex. Um, but we're basically going to be talking about transforming geometry. We're going to be talking about moving, copying, uh, rotating, mirroring, and a few different array functions. These are all just different ways that when we already have our geometry, it, this is uh, how we transform it, whether we need to locate it, orient it, or uh, copy it in several different ways. So let's just uh, let's just charge right in. Okay, so when it comes to moving, you know it's a fundamental transformation. Um, it we have a lot of the same rules that we talked about when we were drawing uh, curves. So when it comes to moving, we can either just click points um, that we want to move to, to and from. We need a start point and an end point. Um, to move so it's very similar to a curve and in the same way we can choose to move um, using our relative positioning system that we talked about so if I want to move up 100 millimeters I can go 0 0 100 or I can I can choose to move and then I can click vertical equals yes and then it's moving the vertical axis and then I can type in 100 so uh, we have a lot of the same rules as as um, as when we draw curves. So we can operate in the relative, in the absolute positioning uh, system. Um, and, uh, and and so that's the fundamentals of, of how we move things. Now I want to talk about copying. It's very similar to uh, moving. And there's kind of two different ways to copy. We can copy to clipboard and that actually allows us to move from actually different Rhino uh, Rhino windows. If we have other Rhino uh, uh, programs running, we can actually copy to clipboard and then paste. And then it will always paste. It will always paste in the exact same X, Y, and Z coordinates. So now we actually have two objects here. We have um, the other form of copy is how we just make copies of things like this. Okay. But there's a better way to do that. Uh, if we only need one copy, then we'll use copy. But if we need multiple copies, and if the uh, distance between those copies is consistent, then there's a better way to do that. And I'll show you that in a, in a, in a few seconds, in a few minutes. Uh, let's just first talk about uh, rotating and mirroring. These are just fundamental transformation um, commands. So um, let's say that we have a let's say that we have a door here. Forgive me, I'm not going to dimension it. Um, I'm just going to draw a door really quickly. Okay, so uh, we have sort of our door slab, and then we want to rotate it so that it's actually open. Um, what we can do here is uh, we uh, we enter in the rotate command, and then we choose the center of rotation, and then we can choose whether we want to copy it or not. I I want I don't want to copy it. And we choose our, our reference line and our end line, our target line, and we've done a rotation. And now, um, and so that's the basics of, of uh, rotating. And if we wanted to copy that, um, if we wanted to do, uh, if we wanted to uh, copy the rotation, then of course we would just uh, go to copy yes, and then we can make as many uh, as many copies as we want to. Okay, and uh, mirroring is similar, and mirroring uh, has similar um, has a similar functionality to rotating. Let's say we want to rotate this door or mirror this door so that it's like a French door, a double door. Uh, we can go to mirror, and we choose our axis, our, our the start of our mirror plane, and then we need to choose the end of our mirror plane. So we're just basically making a line. And if copy is off, then we will just get uh, it will just mirror across that axis. And if copy is on, it will make a copy of that object. And 
again, I'm gonna talk more about hotkeys in a different video, but what I've done is I have one hotkey for um, to, to mirror something without a copy, and I have another mirror to mirror something with a copy, because I use both those functions very often. Um, so I find it helpful to have separate hotkeys for those two separate functions. Okay, and let's look at, actually, let's look at the orientate, uh, the orient uh, command. If we want to move this door over to here, we could move it like this. Oops. We move it like this, and then we could rotate it. Sometimes you'll have to do that. I don't want to have to do that. Uh, we can do it in less steps. So let's do orient. Okay, select objects to orient. Uh, I'm going to choose my first reference point, my second reference point, and then my first target point and my second target point. Boom. And it will. And if I, uh, and we can choose to copy it. I should have copied it. And uh, if this door was a different width, uh, it will actually. Uh, and we, if we choose to scale it, we choose to scale it. It will actually scale. Um, Okay, scale in uh, scale in 3D, and now it will actually change the size of the the oriented object. Uh, so this is not uh, obviously this is not uh, practical for a door because it's going to change the, the width of the slab, but it's it it can be practical for a, a lot of other things that you might run into when you're modeling. I think I think it uh, it's quite valuable. And, and we can use different uh, types of orient. Um, we, can, we can do orient in, in, uh, for solid objects. So we could do a three point orient. And we wanna, if we wanna put this object onto this surface, but we want this base surface to be actually on the wall, we could choose uh, three reference points and then we can choose a target or our three target points. And since scaling is off, it's just going to change the orientation, but it won't change the size. Okay. So we can use orient orient to skip a lot of steps instead of doing moving and rotating uh, and all that stuff. Okay. So uh, let's spend a few minutes talking about different array commands. So if we type in array, we can pull up a few different uh, commands that we might use. Um, and, uh, uh, something not many people know is that I actually can I can actually generate arrays in in real world There's not too many Rhino geometries that I'm able to generate yet in the real world, but it's a power that I'm summoning so um, you know the, uh, the most simple array I think is the linear array it looks like this And uh, it's basically just one line of uh, objects and uh, I can do a polar array um, and uh, and so that's an array around a center point. Okay, this is this is really hard though. Box box array. I have to really focus on this one. The box array. It's so beautiful. Oh. Okay, that one's harder to do. So the basics. Uh, the basics here is that if we're doing a linear array, um, this is the one that I use most often probably. Um, we type in how many numbers, uh, how many number, of, uh, what's the number of items, and then we choose uh, basically to to set our our distance, our um, our the distance between objects. Um, we choose a reference point, and then we choose another reference point, just like that. And if we, but if, if, let's say instead of knowing the distance between objects, let's say we knew the distance between the first and the last object, um, I think the quickest way to do this is to uh, set up a curve. And then let's say there's six, uh, six objects in your, um, in your array, uh, divide the curve into um, five segments. Five segments, and then that means that there's six points. And now there's six points. We can do 
array linear and we're going to put six objects and then our first point and then we'll put the next object on our second point and that way we can that we can control uh, the number of objects and and if we only know the, the total length of the array because we could we can dimension um, we can put a dimension on this first line that we drew and then we can divide it into the number of objects that we want to bring up in our array. So that's just a little trick for you guys. And when it comes to a polar array, uh, it's called array polar. And we choose a center point. And then um, and then we choose how many objects are in the array. And then we have a fill angle. And we'll just do 360. And we can choose, um, we can choose what that fill angle is. It could, because uh, a polar array, it doesn't mean it goes all the way around. It just means it's following an arc. So it could be five. It could be five objects that just fill a quarter of a circle, 90, de 90 degrees. So that's the polar array. Um, another common array is um, what I tried to show you just array and with array you get you can choose the number of objects in all in the x y and z so let's say we want four in the x um, we want three in the y and ten in the z so then we're gonna choose our x spacing our x and y spacing we could have drawn a rectangle if we wanted some points to snap to, or we can type in some numbers, and then we choose our, our Z spacing. So now we have this like crazy matrix type thing going on. So that's fun. Okay, so we covered all the transformation com commands that I wanted to look at. Um, just a few of the basic ones, you know, move, rotate, mirror, and some of the arrays. Uh, some of the array commands and uh, and that's where we're going to leave it on this in this episode and in the next episode we're going to go through some troubleshooting uh, strategies that that uh, they're going to be super useful for when you're running into problems there will always be you're going to run into modeling problems all the time but there are certain tools that I really think you should be aware of that will help you diagnose what the problem is so that you can get past it as soon as possible because I know that a lot of these times these these modeling failures turn into the bottleneck and and they stop you uh, they limit you to the execution of your of your vision you know so I wanted to make a video uh, we're just going through troubleshooting tactics we're gonna look at why is a why is a solid not closed if if you're having an issue with that why is a curve uh, self inter self intersecting curve it won't extrude properly stuff like that but we'll get into it so I hope to see you in the next episode I'm out.